Now that we've got the object ball weight turning into the object ball, we need to give it some actions. So open up the object ball, and the first event we are going to add is a create event. As soon as the object ball weight turns into the object ball, it will be considered created, and so this event will trigger. As soon as it changes, we need to make it start moving. Usually in a brick breaking game, that is off to the upper right. So let's come over to our Move tab and select the Moved Fixed. And we're going to select the upper right arrow and give it a speed of 10. Click OK. And I want to add one more thing. I want to give it just a little bit of gravity. Gravity is over in the Move category, and it is the set gravity with the double arrows. Gravity will apply a constant force in a direction regardless of the speed or direction that the object is currently moving in. The reason that I'm going to add some is because I have found that in this game it is possible to get the ball locked in a constant horizontal bounce going back and forth between the walls. And so by giving it just a little bit of gravity, we can make it fall out of that and come back down towards the paddle. So the direction we need to set is 270, which is straight down, and I'm going to give it 0.03 gravity. If we give it too much gravity, the ball will start to lag just a little bit and it will look unnatural. So hit OK. And now we can set up the collision events. Let's add event, collision, and give it a collision with the object wall. All we want to do here is make it bounce. So come over to our Move tab, jump, and select the bounce. We want to set it to Not Precisely against Solid Object. Then we need to make it bounce against the paddle. So add event, collision, come to our paddles, object paddle, and just like we did in the Pong game, we want the ball to bounce off at a different angle depending on where on the paddle it hits. So let's come over to move and select move free, and we are going to use a formula to determine the angle of bounce. It is going to be 90 plus obj underscore paddle dot x minus x. And then we want to give the speed its current speed plus 0.3. So again, we are going to increment the speed ever so slightly every time it hits the paddle. So the ball will move faster throughout the game and make it just a little bit more challenging. So hit OK. And then finally, we need to set up a collision event with the bricks. Now we only need to select this object brick 1 because object brick 1, remember, is the parent of all of these other objects. And so all the actions we put inside of our object brick 1 will be applied to all of the child objects. So first we need to create a bounce, not precisely against solid objects, so that the ball will bounce off the brick, but then we also want the brick to be destroyed. That is in the main one tab underneath objects and it is this little recycling bin destroy instance. Drag that over and you see it has no parameters but we need to set the applies to to other instead of self. This action is inside of our object ball but we want it to apply to the object that it is colliding with which is the object brick one. So when we say other it is applying itself to the other object in the collision event, which is that object brick 1. And again, because object brick 1 is a parent of all of the other object bricks, this will also apply to all those other bricks, meaning that any brick will be destroyed as soon as it comes in contact with the ball. And before we test this, let's also set up something for when the ball goes off screen. So let's add event, other, outside room, and we could have the ball reset similar to how we did it in the Pong game. However, that's going to give us a few problems when we later put in some power-ups like multi-ball. We've got multiple balls that go off screen. We don't want all of those resetting. So what we're going to do instead is destroy this object and then create a new object ball weight. We're going to create the other object first, however. So over here in main one under objects, this little light bulb, create instance, drag that over, and the object we want to create is the object ball weight. We're going to have to position this ourselves when it pops up on screen, and we're going to want it back in place right above the paddle. So our x position is going to be obj underscore paddle 
dot x which will line it up in the center of our paddle because the origin point of both of our objects is centered and the y coordinate is going to be obj underscore paddle dot y minus 24. Since the origin points of our objects are centered we're going to have to offset the position of the ball so that it is above the paddle. Remember that going negative or subtracting on the y axis goes upward. So hit OK. And now that we've created the object ball weight we can destroy the object ball. Again we come over to our destroy instance, this little recycle bin, and this time we want it applied to self so that the object ball destroys itself. Now the order here is important. If we put the destroy instance first then the object ball would be destroyed and would not exist so that it could then execute the next action. So we would get an error because game maker would be saying hey there's an action here I'm supposed to perform but the object that performs it is no longer on screen. So that is why we are creating the other object first and then destroying this instance. So that should do it. Let's go ahead and test this. Line this up, hit space, and now the ball starts moving. It bounces, destroys bricks, and if we let it go off screen, you can see that it resets our ball, although it, it doesn't really reset the ball. It's just creating a new object ball weight. As soon as we hit space again, it goes flying and repeat but eventually we're going to clear all the bricks out of the room and right now the ball will just keep going off screen and basically resetting itself so there's no way to win or lose so in the next video we'll look at starting to address some of those issues